Your Toyota BC dealers present BC Outdoor Sport Fishing with your host, Mike Mitchell. BC Outdoor Sport Fishing is brought to you by Yamaha, Rapala, Duncan B. Lodge, Lowrance, Port Boathouse. Welcome everybody to BC Outdoor Sport Fishing. Special guest and a special lake, Brian. Yeah. So this is actually funny history on this lake. This is where we shot the pilot for the first ever BC Outdoors episode. And no, we're not going to go to any outtakes of that. <laughs> we're going to stay away from that. There was a lot of outtakes from that. That was with Phil. And then you and I came back a couple years after and had a, had a good productive show here too yeah. as well, right? So yeah. we thought we'd give it another crack this year. Sounds like fishing's been decent, right? But let's skip back and tell people where we are and what we're going to be doing. Well, we're on Hefley Lake, which is located uh, about uh, 40 kilometers uh, northeast of Kamloops. Mm -hmm. And uh, yeah, it's a, it's a nice clear water lake. Yep. The fish aren't huge in here, but they come onto the shoals and we get to see them swimming around. Yeah. So it's a lot of fun and it's a great, great place to uh, catch fish, hopefully on chronomids. All right, well, let's get the tundra backed in, get the G3 in the water and let's go fish. Sun's coming out, Mike, time to go fishing. All right. That's Mike, we're going to go into the calm water and the sun's out. Tell me if you see any fish. Yeah, there's one there. Oh, see yeah, him? yeah, yeah. I like that. We need to see three or there's four, three, and then we'll stop. Four, five. All right, that's enough. See this on, on your left? Yeah. Over here, there's a, there's a channel of marl between two yeah. uh, weed patches. I'm going yeah. to tell me if you see anything on our left. This little channel right here. Yeah. Right? Not seen any more? No. Oh, so it's early in the morning. First thing in the morning, we're just, Mike and I are just fishing a couple of leech patterns, a maroon one and then one black one. And we're just wind drifting. I threw cast into the wind and just letting it drift back towards us. You get a natural drift when it's not too windy covering water that flies tied on with a loop knot and so that leech is just undulating under that indicator so it's a pretty good searching pattern it's a searching technique for start of the day i get an assist on that one. <laughs> oh, could no. cast eight feet over to the left no we're gonna create a leech hatch yeah i remember last time this happened you caught a 10 pounder. <laughs> Brian hanging out in the nursery here. Ooh, it's either getting bigger. I actually did get bigger there. Well, we're going to figure them out sooner or later, Mike. Yeah, okay. I'm I had gonna... to put a black leech on. You just... Gee, that's. It's better. A, it's that's a, start. a better fish, yeah. It's a start, Mike. My indicator went down twice. All right, well, that's a good sign. Well, they're on zoal plankton, what do you do? Hope At least we're not missing the chronomid hatch. No. So again, Brian didn't clean his vial out from the other day. That's, but you can basically see nothing in there. Great. Well, you know what? This calls for, why don't we go down to the Kamloops Wildlife Reserve and go look at the grizzlies. <laughs> Hmm? That's better. A little bit better of a fish too. Right on. What's well, nice one? I don't know if it's a tie or not. But it's all right. It's okay. Want me to trip your indicator? Yes, please. Eating big indicators. Right on. That's good. Yes. It's good, Mike. I'm done. My day's over. <laughs> I'm do some water skiing next. It's the same one. Same one. <laughs> <laughs> 
<laughs> are you now? So what are you doing here? Are you stripping in at all, or are you just no? I'm, wind? I'm dead drifting. I'm casting into the wind. Yeah, and just letting it naturally wind drift back to the boat. It's the most natural drift you can get with a leech. Yeah, and we've got them tied on with non-slip loop knots. Yeah, this is a perfect breeze. Any more than this, we can't do it. But yeah, but uh, oh, it's a good fit. Oh yeah. Whoa, whoa. Yeah, that or that loon's on him. Any more breeze in this and it'll be, it'll be moving too fast. Yeah. It'll and come up too high in the water. Course. Yeah, and we've just moved over to this, this area because we did see some fish moving. Wow, look at that. Go, oh, cartwheels. Wow. Excellent. But we were, we were fishing, we were fishing just a little bit, you know, further up the lake here. And that was the same thing. I was just watching mine just drift back to yep. the boat and we're just casting exactly. back out. A lot of action part there. We got we got no bug hatches today. No chronomas are coming off, which is quite surprising. So the fish aren't happy. We got some nasty weather coming in. Oh, wow, like that. <laughs> that's awesome! <laughs> and uh, but we gotta we gotta move a lot. Yeah. So it's, and uh, try to find some act, little pods of fish that might be a little bit more active. But usually, when you get that low pressure system coming in, and we've already had some rain showers. Drop your anchor. We'll be right back. Closed captioning brought to you by the world famous Duncanby Lodge, located in beautiful Rivers Inlet, British Columbia. You get that low pressure system coming in, and we've already had some rain showers. Yeah. They're going to shut down eventually. Caught behind me here. It's a good one, Mike. Of course, yours is the biggest one of the day. Hey, it's not all day, it's just starting. So, are there um, triploids and diploids in here? No, nope. they're all, they're diploid. All diploids. Yeah. And again, for the viewers, the difference between a triploid and a diploid is uh, diploids are reproductive, so they okay. spawn. Yeah. And the triploid fish are non-reproductive, so they will never sexually mature and spawn. Do you see what I see happening here right now? Swallows. Uh huh. They're out. They're out looking. Yeah. Nice fish. Oh, there's some chronomids in there. Huh? The amber ones. Oh, look at that. See, we see this amber chronomid every year. That is so cool. They are so amber brown in color. Got him, Kurt. <laughs> oh, yeah. Oh, I don't think he's very. Hammer time! Oh, one of those little guys. <clears throat> Did I lose it? Look at that. Oh, oh, little ditty. Hey, hey, Mr. Chan. What do you got? A fish. Go. That's good. A healthy little guy. Nice fish. Yeah. Oh, I see your little amber chronomid out the mouth. I switched it. I just want everybody to see that. It's my name, Mike <laughs> Mitchell. And say again, Brian, you wanted to. <laughs> what were you looking for? I just wanted to have a look at those little chronomids that you got in there. I tied all these myself I on know. Tuesday night. And I know you know exactly how many are in there. Yeah, I know exactly. I've counted. We've done, they're on inventory, on camera. Actually, these are uh, Jordan. Jordan tied these up. I'm not even going to lie. I, I can't tie. Here you go, Brian. Seriously, though, okay? I don't, I don't want any going missing. He's like, you won't. I'm, you never got, oh, all right, no. <laughs> I'm a little leery. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. He's got some killer patterns in here. Let's see this one. Gray thread, wine rib. It's perfect. It's exactly what they're on. Really? Yeah. Because they're in that they're in that pile. Be interesting. Put this on and see what happens. 
Yeah, pass that box back now. <laughs> What the? Brian, are they on these today too, by chance? <laughs> Bleeder. How do you, what size, uh, what size indicator would you use to fish this? I'd, I'd double up. Would you double up? Yeah. Learning with the pros, brought to you by your Toyota BC dealers. So you can see we're fishing in some pretty unsettled weather conditions and wind. And wind is your worst nightmare on lakes when you're fly fishing still waters because we need to keep that boat from swinging back and forth particularly with two of us in the boat ideally we want the boat anchored broadside to the wind so that we can cast straight downwind and the boat's not going to move you maintain complete control over your retrieves and you're going to see the indicator go down or you can feel the bite if you're casting and retrieving if it's too windy to hold with the two anchors that you have out then you can just anchor bow into the wind and then put the stern anchor down so at least you're not going to be moving and when your bow is pointing in the wind there's a lot less resistance on the side of the boat so you'll hold anchor. Alternatively what Mike and I do is we pack extra anchors you know 10 pounders that we can tie onto the anchor line and uh, drop it down to the bottom so we get an extra 10 pounds to keep us in that uh, parallel position and we're not going to be drifting in the wind. So just a couple tips uh, when you're fishing in lakes and you're fly fishing, you need to be solidly anchored and the boat not swinging back and forth. That way you're going to see the bites and you're going to get hookups. For more, for more tips like this, tune into next week's episode or check us out online. Learning with the pros, brought to you by your Toyota BC dealers. Oh. Is that one a little bigger, Brian? Mm hmm. A little bigger? No. No. But it's scrappy. It was a good bite. Yeah. Did you see some fish move on this side? Is that why you flipped over? No, I just, you know me, I like to cast Fit. up wind. Oh, it's okay. Yeah, that's not a bad fish. Skinny. Skinny little guy. Get a drift with that leech. Yeah. Oh, it's a kelt. Oh, well, this is a fish that's been up the creek and spawned. Yeah. Already, so we'll just flip, just flip right in the net and let her go. Did, is your thing gone? Yeah, it hooks out. Yeah, okay, so we can see that. There it goes down. So that was a kelp, or and a kelp is a fish that's a trout that's gone up the creek and spawned already, so. She doesn't have a lot of uh, protective slime. She's a little vulnerable to uh, infection, so it's best once you get them in the net, just don't even handle them. Just, yeah. uh, and the hook fell out perfectly that time and just flip them out of the net. And we don't have to touch them at all. That Check your best. leaders. Yeah. We'll be right back. Ryan, what uh, strain of fish are in here? Uh, Heffley stock each year with uh, Panasque rainbows yeah. deployed, rainbow trout. And has this ever been a rehabilitation like? Actually, uh, Heffley was uh, treated in the late 50s, I believe, okay. or early 60s. It was a lake full of non-game fish species. That's right, just right before you retired, I guess, eh? <laughs> <laughs> and uh, so basically, this was a non-existent trout fishery until, or recreational fishery until it was poisoned. Huh. And uh, now it's, it's a monoculture, just trout in it. And, uh, what other species would have been in here at that time? Oh, there would have been four or five different uh, minnow species, probably sculpins yeah. and uh, stuff like that. And then would they have been transplanted here? No, they're probably native. Okay. They were probably uh, originally in the lake. Okay. Had a fish, Mike? Yeah. Right at the boat here. I was just going to switch over too. Look at them down there. We popped the indicator. No. Maybe? No. Looks a little better. Oh, yes! That is a better, better fish. Is it? Yeah. Right on. <laughs> oh, yeah. I love the way that these fish jump. 
Look at how much line I had in already from that, eh? Okay, there we go. Nice fish, Mike. Yeah. That's a bit better. Ah, that's what we're looking for. Yeah. Is what we. Oh yeah. Good action. Rod's bending nicely. Mm -hmm. Doing his job. I'm gonna be your net boy. You got it. <laughs> That's a good fish. Way to go, Mike. That's a good fish. Your indicator's down, Brian. Oh, no, it's back up. All right. <laughs> <laughs> it's down. And it's up. You gonna do the release, Mike? Yeah, go ahead. You're there. You better gonna... look at this guy before I let him go. Cause that is a beautiful hefty lake rainbow. Oh yeah, look at that. Yeah! There we go. Oh. That's a little better. Well, Mike, we fooled him. We did. <laughs> I missed one. And the wind picked up. Wind changed the rate. Gone 180 degrees. Yeah, it has, yeah. There's a bunch of fish out there though, but they're not happy. Well, especially this one now. Oh, there's one scooting underneath the boat. Or is that your Look fish? Look at that. No. That's, that's another fish. It's a different fish. This one's a little bigger too, Brian. That's been slim pickings. Mm -hmm. We've had to work for every one of them. Yeah. Did you need help in that number or you got it? I got it. Are your indicators popped? That's yep. good. Yeah, I just I just missed one. I'm gonna cast over here. Oh, look at the. Look at you're under the boat. There's one right underneath the boat here looking at you. Check your leaders. We'll be right back. And now, here's a look at today's tackle and gear. Hello, folks. We're gonna to talk to you about the gear that we've been using on today's episode. Uh, so, Fly fishing today, Brian. So again, no downriggers. No, no spoons. No flashers. No shrimp oil. No, no pro cure. No. All right. No. Which is good. All right. So, uh, ten foot five weight fly rods seem to be the standard now. We're using the new Mayhem uh, CXP fifty one hundred, which uh, is kind of new. Yeah. Nice modern new action. Yeah. Does its job. Right, got a good bend in it for the fish so far. It's good, and then for the reels, we're just using a large arbor fly reel. Lots of brands out there. Um, we don't have the new Mayhem ones in yet, so we're just using a generic brand we had had in the bag, right? And then this is kind of where it gets a little bit more technical. Different lines are out there and leaders and, and that kind of stuff, right? So we'll talk a little bit about the lines and leaders. Yeah, certainly we're fishing indicators today, and there are some great lines made by manufacturers that are specifically meant to be fished with indicators. So we're using scientific angler nymph taper. Mm -hmm. That's what you had in your rod. And then on mine, I was using a uh, Titan, wavelength Titan, mm -hmm. scientific angler. And they're both a little heavier up front yeah. on the front tapered section. So it turns over those indicators and swivels on yeah. the fly. Yeah. And so speaking of leader construction too, I mean, we started out with, uh, was it a 12 foot, 12 foot scientific angler, basically tapered leader and then we work our way down, right? Yeah, so we had tapered, actually we had nine foot okay. uh, that uh, tapered leaders that ended in four X or mm -hmm. six pound. Then we added some more scientific angler, six pound or four X tippet mm -hmm. down uh, to a uh, number 10 barrel swivel. And then, uh, and then below the swivel, we had about 24 inches of uh, additional four uh, X or six pound uh, monofilament. We're just using straight mono today. Mm -hmm. And then we're tying our flies, whether they're leeches or chironomids, with a non-slip loop knot. Okay. Let's, should we show the flies? Yeah. You know what? Today was special because we caught all the fish on your flies today. I think you just wanted to raid my fly box, <laughs> but that, that's fine. So this is the one that, uh, I think we the gold bead leech yep. first on there. So there's that one there. So we'll show that one. We'll get you yeah, to so that. we started out with leeches this morning because it was a little, uh, yeah. you know, it's, it was... That's what we start out with, just yeah. before any chronomids are going to hatch. So yeah. you were using the black one and I was using, uh, this is a black 
dubbed one and I was using a um, black marabou yeah. uh, leech, but they're small, they're micro leeches. Yeah. And then once we were able to get a couple of fish that were bigger, we were able to do some pumping. And, and again, we found that you were saying on this lake is quite unique because they have a, an amber colored chrono exactly. that comes off, yeah. right? So uh, rifling through the boxes, look what I happen to have right here. No, it was a perfect <laughs> right? So, uh, And, and so, this yeah. one's tied on a red hook, which is even better because I love red hooks yep. when I'm saltwater fishing anyway. So uh, it's kind of yeah. neat, right? So those are the main tickets there that work today too. And, and again, the, the, so far, it's the weather's been uneasy, right? We've got clouds coming in. We heard yeah. some thunder at one point and a little bit of rain and the wind. It's funny. It's changed direction a couple times yeah. on us, right? And uh, the fish aren't that happy yet. No. So, again, we're lucky to be able to get something on. Yeah. A lot of short bites. And when they're biting short and we're missing that many fish, you know they're just pecking at it. And yeah. They're not really interested. They yeah. want to fully commit. Yeah. All right, folks, we're going to follow up a quick list of what we've been using, and then we'll see it on the water. There you go. On a day like today, Brian, when you're, when the fish are inconsistent, would you pump most fish? Yeah. Yeah, you do. Okay. Yeah, we got. We need to. Yeah. Yeah. Just to check. Look at he's got that amber. He's got that amber chronum in him. Huh? Well, you let that monster go. <laughs> <laughs> One of the bigger ones. Today. Well, it was funny though. Like we've gone through a bit of a changeover in the weather conditions, right? And that's definitely played a role on on what we're catching and how many we're catching. But yep. we, I think we did okay for scratching it out. We've heard some thunder yep. in the background. Yeah. Rain started to rain. The sun and then the wind. We saw that wind coming down the lake. You could see it on the trees. It was <laughs> at the point, and you could just time it. All of a sudden, it was here. And man, it's cold. It's cold. Bro. I'm yeah. never cold, and I'm cold today. Well, it's an east wind today. Yeah. Well, it switched from west to east. Yeah. Had a falling barometer for sure all day long. Mm -hmm. Look how many fish we missed. Yeah. A lot of light tapes. Just yeah. plucking at it and. Yeah. yeah. But that's all right though. And again, we recap a few things we've learned today, right? Like we start out searching patterns, yeah. right? And uh, micro leeches under indicators. And we've got a few fish there, yeah. you know, uh, some decent ones. Some small guys as well too, right? Yeah. And then once we got those bigger fish, we're able to pump them again, right? And yeah. that's another thing we... I don't know if we hit on enough is like any anything under 12 11 12 inches we don't we don't want to no, see getting no, pumped right too small. Yeah. and then once we got some bigger fish we were able to find what what they're keying in on exactly and, and found those amber colored chronomids yeah. which we'll show in the in the gear talk there beautiful right? but, chronomid yeah yeah so which is kind of neat then right and then match the hatch and and thing we are seeing fish move under the boat and that's a great this lake is really cool for that <laughs> i'm up on the front looking down with my glasses and i can see them going back <laughs> and forth it's pretty neat so yeah. but it's it's all in all it's it's a typical day in trout fishing some days right this is what you get you right? just never know and you like you said earlier we moved a lot today yeah you gotta move yeah and you could come here tomorrow or be here yesterday and have a totally different day and never change position more than twice yeah yeah, so anyway, but thanks for being on the show again, Brian. You're welcome, Mike. Lots of fun oh, again. Oh, nice warm <laughs> yeah, hands. That's right, get out of there. <laughs> right, and thank you folks for joining us in BC Outdoor Sport Fishing. Look forward to having you join us on a future episode.